Yo, America, what up? It's 929 WDUP, New London's home of timeless hip hop and RB. It's your boy Mike Mitch Ill. And I'm thrilled to have this woman on the airways with us, Jordan Pauline. Song writer, actress, she do it all. You know what I mean? Got the uh, new project, Love Songs to Nobody. You know, Love Songs About Nobody. Yeah, About Nobody. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know. We're going to talk about that. Like, so what's on deck? Like, what can people expect for that album? Although, you know, tell me about it a little bit. Uh, it's a trap pop album, a mixture of everything. I feel like it's something for everybody, even the fellas. Um, it's a new sound, a new frequency that is already ahead of its time. So I feel like you should listen to it and get to know me, get to know who I am. So you can prepare yourself for my next album. That's 10 times better. So, trap pop, did you create that own lane yourself? Or is that like a lane yeah. that's already been established and you coming through to tear it down? Oh, no, I created that what? myself. Tell me that a little line. bit. So it's like a little Britney mixed with a uh, Gucci man or something? Like, how that work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's actually a great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for I got you. I got you back. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, it's like, I, I mean, I have pop vocals. Um, of course, I'm a black woman. I love trap. Let's shake it. You know, I like to move. So I feel like me mixing those two worlds, including my Guyanese side, came up with something cool. Yeah. So that's yeah. now one of my one of my best friends is um from uh, Guyana. Yo, big up my boy, Cool Breeze, Keon. Hey, shout out, Cool yeah, Breeze. Yeah, I think he's from like I could be wrong, Keon. Forgive me. Yo, I think he's from like Georgetown. Are you from there? Or, yeah, like, yeah. Georgetown. There? Is that yeah. like like the hub? Like that's like the biggest city in Guyana? Like talk about your roots in yeah. Guyana. That's pretty much the biggest. But it's different parts. Yeah. Georgetown, we're going hard for you. We're going hard for GT over here. Let's talk about the music scene out there. Um, actually, I came from there when I was six years old to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Uh, but my cousin Dasani, I have a lot of cousins out there own clubs they've been spinning me so my fan base has been going crazy out there Man. um yeah i really feel like i'm just here to put on yeah <laughs> i mean you came out when you were six i was about to ask like what was like the biggest challenge transitioning from coming from guyana to la i mean that had to be a culture shock for you for real from what you can it remember was. going six but, you know, it no. was it was it was a real culture shock like american kids are very mean yeah Absolutely. Very mean. <laughs> like, you know, but I had to deal with it for like a year, maybe. And then I went straight to homeschool in mm -hmm. second grade. And I was there ever since. Yeah. I was homeschooled my whole life. Mm. So let's talk about um your career, you know, on the come up. You know, for those who may not be as knowledgeable about your, you know, about what you've been doing, even though you got a big fan base already. But for those out here on the East Coast, you know, give a little background about yourself. You know, we talked about your upbringing in uh, Guyana and everything like that. But talk about, like, some of uh, your upbringing coming up as a musician. Like music I listen to and stuff? Mm -hmm. You're all that. I have a, ooh, a mixture of everybody. I love so many artists. Um, Stevie Wonder, Minnie Ripperton, Prince. It's all stuff my mom would just play. Uh, Patra, of course. Oh, Patra, uh, we see that today. Uh, yo, you should, yo, that'd be dope. Yo, you can like track down Patra. And Patra, what? I'd be fired. That's already in the works. I love Patra so much. That's my favorite artist. Like, I'm seriously. Look at today. She's still looking at She's still holding it together. She's still She's too cold. Patra's Dang. amazing. Yo, tell but, Patra to say hi for real. Patra's bad. Yo, Patra, what's up, girl? <laughs> I love you. Hey. Um, but yeah, no, when, when I came from Guyana, my mom had the dream to pursue to be a manager. So, you know, the music industry is already wishy-washy. So we yeah. had it a little hard, you know, a lot of sacrifices. Um, and yeah, she didn't have babysitter. Like I said, I got homeschooled really early because kids were very mean. So mm -hmm. she was like kind of forced to take me to like her business moves. Yeah. And, you know... I was very passionate, still am very passionate about music, writing, singing, the whole nine. And I was just around it at a young age. I'm like, oh my God, I could do it too. So listen to me. Yeah. So around 10 years old, um, we linked up with Alonzo Jackson and he like put together Destiny's Child and like a bunch of amazing things. 
Um, and it was an opportunity to write for Disney. And I ended up writing for Disney and they ended up loving everything I was putting out. Then it was fast forward to Nickelodeon, fast forward to MTV, fast forward to E, fast forward to motion picture movies. I was just writing music because everybody was just like fucking with it. And then um, hey, yo, we, we live on here. FCC phone oh, back, please. Oh, that's it, sorry. <laughs> Everybody Not, you know, she said fudge. Loving it. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> loving it. <laughs> Yo, um, you said you was like writing for Disney, like in what capacity? Like you writing, like you know what I'm saying, like bars <laughs> for like Aladdin or something. Were you writing for Disney? What's going on with um, that? I did the show Shake It Up and like F Farm and different shows yeah. on their channel. Um, yeah. yeah, I just had the artist do it, write it, have them record it. Um, what was songwriting like your breakthrough to actually, you know, get your footing for yourself? Yeah, what? Okay. And honestly, like that's really my only form of like, you know, when it's like a lot of steam in a pot, and you take the lid off, mm. like, oh, smoke them. I feel like that's my way of like therapy is writing music and making music. That's like my steam releasing. Yeah. Um. I want to interview. But um, yeah. So you got any like writer credits for like any other established artists? You like you know you ghost writing and all that? Oh, yeah, you know I do. Um, I have one with one of the like top tier R&B. You say oh, you got like an NDA or something? You can't say it. Yeah, you know I have I have a lot, bro. I have a lot in the works. Like I don't yeah. even, right. I don't like talk about it because people just I just want it to just come out and I'm like okay yeah I did that next what's next right. but um one of my favorite artists I actually have a placement on him and it's coming out very soon for his next album I think it's supposed to come out this month it's 444 um or next month but it's within November and December he's dropping his album and I wrote uh, one of the main songs um of course I'm in the pop girl field I love writing pop music uh, but really right now I had to like step away from writing for so many artists and focus on cultivating my own sound and who I am and make sure I sign, still deliver that package first before I give the sauce away to too many. Or well, you got, got to take care of home first. You got to take care of yourself first. Then you can look out yeah. for that. Yeah, but, um, you know, you being a writer, you know, of course, like uh, you got the versatility. Is that like intentional? Like the records I heard, you sound very first versatile. You know what I mean? That's the impression I got from you. Is that intentional? Or is it just like, that's who I am. It's just like one day I'm feeling like this, I'm, I'm trapped, and I'm pop, yeah. and I'm this, like how, how I work. Yeah. Uh, Literally, it's whatever the mood is. Like, I don't know, it's just be coming out. All right, I told about the mood, like I, I'll do some research. I don't know if it's still the fact, but like you got your own strain of that smoke, smoke, you know what I mean? You got a little bit of that strain of that crowd, told about that. I do. We're re-releasing the Pauline Cushion Pop Star Pack, and it will be more so nationwide, state to state, to all the states that's legalized weed. I know New York legalized it. I know um, Florida's working on it. But yeah, I'm working on getting my in dispensaries countrywide. Um, mm -hmm. We're actually next week. I'm reshooting the packaging for the. Um, the weed packaging yeah and yeah no it's gonna be a whole new relaunch rebrand so it could be more so like legit it's really hidden states like i remember um i was sending some of my like fans oh i can't say that <laughs> you good, you good. You good. <laughs> But like they was like, it's not in my state. Like, what do I do? Yo, we just legalized our Connecticut. You know, you gotta work with the team. Maybe you know, get, you know. I mean, okay, we talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's wrap this up. We can talk. Uh, we go over there and make that happen. So say it word for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do you feel like it's like the modern golden era for like female rappers and artists and singers and stuff like that? You know, what I mean, do you feel like it's like the golden era right now? Because there's a lot of like women out here popping. There was like a, a quiet period for women and then like it started to fluctuate and then it's like popping through the roof right now you feel like it's like a golden era right now it's the season for women for sure men okay. dominated the industry long enough even mm -hmm. women in business i love to lift them up like behind the scenes there's so many amazing phenomenal top-notch head honcho women running the game yep. and that is so lit black mm -hmm. women at that 
and of course, all types of shades and variations. But really, the ones that I've been coming across have been like really them girls that's really changing how everybody's viewing things like and seeing it and it's amazing honestly I, this is really the time for women and I feel like all women should step up to the plate and stop downplaying themselves because yeah it's not a man's world but I mean it's a man's it. world but <laughs> to the sad so yeah but on the flip side of that though all right the more people that's in here bubbling whatever like you feel like it's more competition like are y'all competitive amongst each other Oh, I don't see. I don't view anybody as my competition. Mm. Now, is that no, talk like yo? Anybody rock with me, or you being humble? Because it could go both ways. You like yo? Nobody. No, I mean nobody want to see me in the booth, really. Oh, talk that talk. If, if, if it was a competition, I mean, I I don't want to say too much, but now we encourage that. I, talk that talk. <laughs> in the say. booth, it's no competition. Uh, it's really not. Hey, her pen game up. She told you she's a songwriter. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I saw in another interview, like, uh, like you freestyle off the top. I'm not going to ask you to do that. You know what I mean? Because that's mad awkward. We, like, she checking in. Ah. We you know we live on the radio. We, she ain't going to do no acapella here. You got to listen to her music. We're going to play right after this interview. But what I'm saying is, like, yo, I heard you kind of nice off the top, though. Like, you could actually rap. Like, you got bars. I mean, I'm not necessarily rap. Like, rapping, actually, I have to, like, sit there, scratch my head a little bit and think of the bars. Yeah. But, like, for some reason, like, melody, singing, structuring, harmonies, like, all of that, mm -hmm. that comes off the top. Like, I could sing you a whole song, and you'd be like, that's out? And you'd be like, no, I just made it up. The top. Yo, you heard that? You heard that here over here? You know, she, <laughs> she, she, like, Biggie and Hove out here, just right off the top. She don't need no pen, no paper. You know, off the <laughs> top. Uh, for real. <laughs> so, yo, talk about some of the production on your own, on your project, you know, some of the producers you work with and some of your dream producers that you would love to work with, you know, move down in the future. Um, I would say I would like to knock out my dream producers first. Um, Pharrell, he knows about me. I'm coming for you, Pharrell. Uh, yo, Pharrell, Pharrell that she worth it. Pharrell, now you know. Yeah. This ain't nothing to play with. Like me and Pharrell will like Pharrell make yeah. some real shit. I mean, some real Mitch. Yup. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Pharrell, yo, legend. You know what I'm saying? Big up Pharrell. That guy. Yeah. Um, but the main guys on the the EP now is Killer B. He did positions for Ariana Grande. He mm. got um, I got I think like two songs on Summer Walker's new album out. Yeah, he's 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 out here. He's really moving. Um, Killer B, shout out Killer B. Amazing producer. Mm -hmm. um, Kane, one of my favorites. He produced like Nasty, Spiral. Uh, he's out in Atlanta. Amazing. My favorite producer. And Benny X. If you know, you know Benny. You know, you know Benny. If you in this field and you make music, you should know Benny. Benny's mm -hmm. that guy. Um, and I think that was pretty much that was pretty much all the producers I really worked with on this e EP. I think DB. And that was it. Mm. Yeah. So um, let's talk about prior to COVID, afterwards, you know what I'm saying? Like, were you doing mad shows prior to COVID hitting? And then on top of that, like, our shows picking back up now that we kind of, like, you know, getting away from that pandemic a little bit. Yeah, I'm grateful for COVID. I mean, not like that, but... I know, it's all crazy, but now nah, we know yeah, what you're doing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I made a lot of moves in the pandemic. I made a lot of money. I tapped into who I am more. Yeah. And yeah. like, I mean, at first I was doing free shows. Now I'm doing pay shows. So price is going up. You heard that. You feel uh, me? Uh, it's <laughs> lit. Yeah. But yeah, and you, know. what, you said you said it benefits you and of course, like mm -hmm. I'll say it is a cancer culture. She don't mean like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's awful what we've been through as a, a, mm -hmm. a you know I mean, community and everything like that, you know, with COVID and all that. But yeah. so you was able to kind of, you know. Turn a negative to a positive for yourself. Yeah. You know, talk about that a little bit in depth. Um, still, I do not wish COVID on anybody. Anybody battling COVID, you're going to make it through. We review COVID in Jesus' name. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was just, like, in the house chilling. I was eating a lot. I just left, like, just lost my quarantine weight, like, oh, two weeks ago. I feel really good. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I was just like meditating, writing mad songs. Like, I think I've never wrote so much music in my life. Like, and that was cool because I, I, I value my music as money. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> any plans to do any um, shows over here on the East Coast? Uh, and have you done some any any East Coast shows uh, previously at all? Um, no. Oh, no. I haven't done East Coast yet, but very soon. We try to make that happen. You know, we right make next to New York. So, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, we talk about that. So, I love performing. That's like one of, like, literally makes me feel so alive. I never yeah. even knew like until like i've done it and i was like wow is this what it's like beyonce <laughs> i don't know do you black out like her turn sasha feels like, I, black, I, like I don't even know like, i don't even like to like i don't even know i literally just do it it's crazy yeah what do you like more do you like the performance aspect or do you like you know being in the booth and actually recording do you like one i love, I love recording i be getting sleepy recording enough so I think perform is like one of my favorites right now, but maybe because I've been recording so much and I've never really experienced like performing, performing a lot. I mean, I've done like 12 shows total as yeah. an artist. So yeah, I think that's my new thing right now. It's really performing. I love performing. Hey, now you've seen it in your videos and you know, Again, I've been doing my research. I heard you got flagged on YouTube. Like, I saw your videos. Like, I don't think it's like X rated or nothing. Like, I mean, it looks good. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I from a perspective, flagged. it looks amazing. But hey, X rated. Talk about yeah. that a little bit. Why they flag you, yo? Hater? Um, hater, yeah. And wow. that, it was one of the, a big dog that signed, I feel, um, or somebody at a label that did it just because they keep copying and it was just like a whole bunch of like stuff that didn't even need like it was unnecessary just trying to stop the blessing and hate but god said what's for you is for you you hear me Best. so i kept it going kept it pushing and now we good you went you in the right direction for sure absolutely so yo you know you, you, you said you you trap pop right Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else in trap pop? And now you gonna do like a trap pop this record at somebody? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yo, honestly. And I just, uh, I, I think that sounds dope. Trap pop. You know what I'm saying? That sounds dope. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm glad you came up with that lane. But yeah, but like it's trap. So it's like it sounds. Uh, it's like all right, somebody else try to come up with some trap pop. You might fire on the ass real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, I mean, I'm sure some people are out there dabbling in it now i mean go ahead do it do what you do but uh, i got the llc so it's cool what's it called, okay. what's it called? Okay. Uh, um yeah yeah I that. <laughs> <laughs> so yo you've been out here acting for a minute and i know you rub shoulders with a lot of people and you know you had collabs with certain people and you you know just had interaction with people or there's certain like and you don't got name names feel free if you want to you know what i'm saying we ain't trying to be messy over here but what i'm getting at is like yo was there like a um a, a person you might be a fan of or you had a perception of and you meet them in person and it was like the exact opposite? It was like, oh damn, I thought you was like this, but now you like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever get that? No, it's this girl that's out right now that oh my god, wait. I don't know what it is. You ain't gotta say no names. You ain't got I mean she's hey, I'm not to everybody go so crazy for her. She's so sweet to the world. Yeah, yeah. Met her complete girl hitter. I said, wow. Man. I met a lot of people like that, though. I mean, it is what it is. A lot of people are intimidated by me. And As they should I, be. I, I, As they should be. I didn't see me, and it's crazy, but no. Yeah, because I, I don't, like, when I walk in a room with, like, I've been in rooms with every every celebrity, every star you can even think of. When I walk in, I don't walk in like I'm less than. Like, I, I rise to every occasion. Mm. So... Yeah, and a lot of people that's records sold and that's so far ahead would be so threatened by me. And I'm like, I'm just me. This is who I am, you know? And I mean, I don't, I, I can't wrap my it's mind around. Right. Right. I just feel like she light up a room. You heard that. You know what I'm saying? Respect her. God's light, <laughs> God's child for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But talking about like, you know, get flagged on YouTube, like, talk about like your family, like, you know, your, your content, like, 
Do they have any problems with your content at all? Like family members keep you actually close to. I don't know if you got boo boo at home or something. You know what I'm saying? Like they have any like issues with that? What's going on? Um, That's their point. Are they secure with you? I had a boyfriend. I was very insecure about me just being me and posting pictures and looking cute on my videos or whatever it is. I had to let that go. My mom, on the other hand, number one, she's a cool mom. She let it rock. She's like, yeah, baby, shake that ass for the camera. <laughs> Thank you, mom. Right, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you good. You good. Yo, you can say ass. You can say uh, damn. You just can't say okay. the X word. You might be able to uh, stop by with the B word. You know what I mean? But just keep me in that. I'm not going to say, say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it no more. Um, but my uncles and stuff, they're like, oh my god, you know. Thank like, you. No. Uh, my aunties, they're coming around to it. At first, I was like, well, young lady should present yourselves like that. But they're coming around. My guy and side, they're all coming around because they're like, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, okay, cool. Well, I mean, all right, if I heard you right, you're available now for all my fellas out there listening. You know what I mean? Jordy Pauline. YouTuber, Google her. You see how gorgeous she is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she light up a room. You heard it. She walk into the room with anybody. She lights up a room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that yeah, I hear that. For the fellas out there listening, you available? Yeah, yeah, would, you talk to like a, uh, would you talk to like a, um, an average Joe? Or like uh, you got you to have a couple comments under your name. Like how, how does that work? I mean, you for sure have to have something going on for yourself, just for yourself, because you can't depend on any human in this world to change your life more than you want to change it for yourself. So Mm -hmm. I feel like you should at least have some dreams going, at least some genius ideas that I could put my money behind and we could both make some money. It depends, though. I mean, I love a funny person. I don't really know what I like anymore, because what I thought I liked just turned out to be not what I like. So I'm, at this point, I'm letting God guide me. Let go, let God handle Let go, let go. <laughs> For sure. Yo, let's get into your acting uh, credits. You know, I mean, not even credits, just, you know, your whole acting experience. Like what you've done so far and what you got on deck. Um, I just shot my first motion picture, like starred in, called The Deadly Follower. Um, that should be dropping 2022. I actually go back to Alabama to finish it this month. Dang. Yeah, we have, like, a few more scenes. Um, I have, like, three other movies I'm working on. Actually, two other movies and a TV show. And then um, I also write and do my own screenplays. So that's in the works. We have a Pauline's World show coming, reality, to get you guys in the mood of who I am. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. But I do have my hand in everything right now. And also, I do not want to forget my philanthropy work. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually starting this organization for single mothers and kill children that are in abusive households and, you know, lack a lot and for homelessness in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Pretty soon, like, God willing, I'll be able to, like, spread it out and I'll be able to go, like, state to state and really be, like, of some help. But as of right now, I can only do what I can do until you guys start buying my records and making me diamond so I can show you guys how to really change the world. I hear that. We're finishing Michael Jackson's work over here, guys. <laughs> you heard that. You heard that. I respect that for real. What is that? Yeah. Um, where, where, where do you get that? What do you draw that from? Like, you know, the philanthropy and everything like that. Like, where do you get that from? It's just like innately in you or like, you know? I don't know. It's my heart. I hear that. I, I'm so sensitive, guys. Like, when I talk about certain stuff, like, I might start crying. I know, you look like, a little weepy eye right now. Did you dash this question? It's in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yo, I want to take a turn on this interview right now. Because, again, I know I got to keep doing the preface. But, like, yo, I've been doing my research, damn it. Yo, mm-hmm. tell me, you almost got kidnapped? What the heck? Oh my God, yes. I almost got kidnapped. That's why it hit me in my sternum. It hit me in my heart a little bit. Oh, my God. Yeah, I almost got kidnapped when I was, like, five. It was, like... Really? Yeah, it was a Pablo Escobar looking dude in the van with, like, a couple other, like, minions or something like that. Like, yo, Papi, I look, I look Puerto Rican. So, oh. that all the time. And then my mom was like, get your ass in the house. 
and I ran, they pulled off in the van. So when I was like hearing the story, I was like, yo, I feel your pain. We kindred spirits. Oh, that kid, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> That's so crazy. My mom <laughs> told me that um, an Asian man tried to steal me before at the hospital when I was a baby because I looked Asian. Well, they thought, like, I don't know. But yeah, in New York, this was recently. <laughs> a taxi driver went crazy what? on me. And why? We taking the Uber or it was like the yellow cab joint? It was a yellow cab joint. What? It was a freak story, bro. And then I tried to jump out the car. A bus passes by, like, almost hit me. A bus. And then he literally jumps out the car so quick. I don't even know how he got there. Socks me in the face. Throws me back in the back seat. I'm like, what the heck is going on? I couldn't believe, like, what I was going through. And Yo, I was you ain't like, got no sketch of him? Like, his face? No, like oh, no. I got it. I handle mine, but thank <laughs> God to this tatted man, whoever you are, he had like some Jane, Johnny Depp like swoop hair up gel, mm-hmm. and he had like mad tattoos. He ran over there, he had his girlfriend with him. He saw what it was happening. He's like, "Whoa, what's happening?" Thank God for that man because like if he didn't come like stop and like like literally save me, I probably I don't know, I don't know. Like he was crazy. That taxi driver was crazy. Hey, praise God, you good. You got up out of there. Salute to homie with the tats and all that, for real. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I had to take that dark turn, but, you know, we cover everything <laughs> over here now, too. <laughs> nah, because it hit me in my soul. I almost got kicked out at, like, five, yo. They try to, like, throw me in sex trafficking or something like that. Oh I might not be here. <laughs> it hit me in my core. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we got to save kidnap victims, too. Let's put, that, let's put a mark on that, guys. We got to really... Find the kidnapped victims that are still out there alive, fighting yeah, for their own. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, acting on um, again, you know, is there any like role that's off limits for you? Would you do like Holly Berry Monster Ball with like old white dude doing some wild ish? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's off limits for you? you know <sighs> Honestly, I believe in the art. Like, if it's a really good movie and it makes sense, I'm willing to do everything except be a demon exorcist like ghost that's mm-hmm. like in white running down the hallway like no absolutely not I don't know was that another bad experience right there I don't think oh, wow. mm, like that that's a real and people that be just playing with that stuff is nothing I wouldn't do no movie with a Ouija board in it no. I wouldn't do nothing that's based on a true story about no haunting or nothing none of that yeah. but like sex scenes and stuff i won't even say that because i don't want to start getting all types of calls to do that and i'll but oh, if yeah, it's the right, right up, you phone ring off the hook <laughs> right movie uh yeah mm-hmm. if it's like that iconic type yeah. movie okay Man, right, so what's an iconic movie like would you like to play somebody like a former star or something like that or mm. actually i really wanted to do a movie on dorothy danridge mm. You guys know that she's like the first black actress that really paved the way for black actresses. She had a really hard, like sad life. Um, But you know who looks like her the most is Doja Cat. So I feel like Doja Cat should probably play that. But I don't know, really. I don't really know. But if I do reenact somebody, it got to be like how J-Lo did Selena and how... um, Tina Turner, Tina Turner movie was made. Like, what love got to do with it? I thought that was Tina Turner this whole time. Oh and yeah. That's not- yeah, what's love got to do with it? So, yo, um, let's talk about endeavors outside of entertainment. You know, all right, you do the, the acting, you do the, the, you know, the music, the songwriting, but like outside of entertainment, you got anything else going on? You got clothing line or something like that? You got the Jordan Pauline JP line? Now I mean, uh, bucket hat joint. What's going on? We got the merch coming soon. Um. It's supposed to be dropping this month of November. Uh, like hoodie and some sweats and like a t-shirt for right now. But I am in the works of designing that drip. So yeah, that's going to be very soon. Um, I have a hairline coming with the bundles. Get that. And uh, what else? I'm going to wait to, you know, open up my restaurant's but I am going to be opening up some few restaurants. I'm really, I'm actually like looking at property now on like opening up a restaurant. 
He's but, messing with the light. He's like the guy in each restaurant in all that. Or yeah, like, guy in each restaurant. No, there's no good Caribbean food in all that. There's decent food. Like blessed is good on like in Inglewood. Uh but good Caribbean food in LA? No. Not even good food at 3 a.m. No. Like, no. like this no. This no. No. I can do too much longer, but uh, we gotta talk about a couple of your records that we got that we're gonna um premiere live on 929 right after we wrap this interview up. Uh we got booted up, lustful desire, nasty, toxic. You know what I'm saying? Like which record is your favorite out of the four? Like, yo, what's the go-to? Is like you talking to somebody like, yo, I'm Jordan Pauline, I'm big bleeping deal out here. Listen to this record. Like, what's your go-to record? Even if it wasn't in the four I just named, like, you know, what's your go-to record? Like, we trying to like put people on you, like, yo, I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? I got this record I just made. I actually got some records I just made. That's like my favorite, like everyone. Records called Bedroom. Um, Lustful Desires, of course, that's my top tier number one record that's out right now. Go stream that. But the deluxe music, the music that's on the deluxe. That's oh, yeah, why I need to that. Get into that little bit. Listen to love songs about nobody now and just wait for the deluxe guys. And that's that. How much long before we get to the deluxe joint? You got a date yet? Or January, still- 12. January 12th. Okay, I'm not sure if you missed Pauline's that. birthday. That's my grandmother's Pauline birthday. Oh, we're salute on that for real. So, yo, hey, Jordan, it's been a pleasure having you on here. You know what I mean? We thrilled to have you on here. Super talented. And, yo, America, we about to do a not not a double play, not a three-peat play. We about to four-peat out here. Like, you know what I mean? We going to play four records straight from Jordan Pauline out here. Make sure you go check a joint. You know what I mean? Keep an eye out for the deluxe joint. And then on top of that, you know, she on the big screen, on the silver screen, too. So, you know, anything else you want to say to the people real quick? Go stream my songs about nobody out now, Jordan Pauline everywhere to everybody you know about her she's awesome and follow me on instagram at jordan pauline j-o-u-r-d-i-n-p-a-u-l-i-n-e and go listen to that good music you heard hey, hey jordan hang on for one more second we about to get into your record i didn't even hang you back for one more second but yo get into it 929 wdup jordan pauline we gonna get into that what are we playing lustful desires first and then we gonna get into that toxic record and then yeah, we got yeah, two yeah. more after that, cuz. So we might go to right now. <laughs> 